all my life been a City fan. But uh, it's kind of the best it's ever been now at the moment, I think. Would you agree? Absolutely. I mean, when you were a kid, um, can you remember when, when you first went along and what your earliest memories are? Oh, um, man. Well, I remember going to games. I remember my dad taking me and my brothers at a very early age, um, sneaking us over the uh, fence and flat lane to join him in the uh, main stand. But I can't remember what games, you know, the mid. This will be this. I remember seeing Colin Bell play um, that side. I probably could still name him. Uh, <laughs> let me think. Corrigan Book. Pardo, Doyle, George Eslop, Alan Oates, uh, Summerby, Belly Summerby, and Nelly Young. Have I missed anyone? You missed <laughs> Don't a few there, and I think George Eslop might have been a slightly different era. It probably was Watson. Ah, or, right. Or I've got at the time. Few. It was yeah. sort of late, late 60s, early 70s, and then, you know to and fro ever since and then work got in the way and but, but now um now it's nice to be back uh, going i'm not like you I, compared to you i'm plastic but, but but i guess most people are that, that plastic comment is um, something that people use as disparaging. As far as I'm concerned, if you're a City fan, it no matter if you go to one game. I met a game, a guy recently who was at his first game or his third game or whatever. They're no yeah. less City fans than we are. It's just that, you know, some people yeah. choose to go in one direction. I've not been a great actor or comedian. Or, and you've even written and performed in your own show about football, haven't you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't write that. That was Joe Wilkinson, uh, and uh, but um, I was in it and directed it and produced it and stuff. Yeah. So you've got. I mean, it's, it's sort of the Jimmy Grimble type. Well, it's in really. blood, isn't it? If uh, you know, if football's in your blood, it, it's in it's in your blood. I'm do, I'm just doing a new thing, which, which speaking of football and telly. Uh, it's not about football, but it's by a, a writer called uh, Peter Bowker, um, who did a brilliant thing, if you haven't seen it, called Marvellous about the Stoke City. Can you remember it? About the Stoke City kit man. Uh, a terrific thing. So if anybody out there hasn't seen it, it's called Marvellous. It's a few years old now. With Toby Jones, is it, who played the lead? I can't remember. But uh, that is the best football program, uh, football TV show, film it was really. So if you haven't seen it, get watching it. Sorry, you mentioned I tracked. Oh, it's all right, that's not a problem. You talked about Bell Lee, Summerbee, Neil Young, and I suppose Alan Oakes and, and lots of other great players from that era. Glenn Pardo was one of my absolute favourites. Book is still around. How does that, that group in your head yeah, you know, I mean, you know, we're all foggies now. But how do, in your head, how does that compare to what we're watching now? Do you, do you feel the same well, strong identity with the, the team it, now? There's as strong an identity. Oh yeah, but um, I think it's different. You know, comparisons are odious, as uh, someone once said. But they they, uh, they were a magnificent side in, in those days. And we're a magnificent side now, playing completely different football than the Melly Summerby era played, um, but nonetheless as effective. Uh, well, it's the best. It's the, the it's the it's the best we've been under Guardiola. So, um, but I would have loved to have taken the likes of Colin Bell out of that team and put him in this team playing in midfield alongside De Bruyne and, you know, who, who really reminds me of uh, Colin Bell more, more than anyone when he gets that ball out from his feet in midfield and runs and you just know we're going to get a good ball through and he runs back and two between the boxes and just very reminiscent of the Bell period. It'd be nice to merge them together, but that won't be possible, Cheesy. No, it won't. It won't. I mean, I know you listen to the podcast and for that, I'm very appreciative. Yeah. Um, and you know that we talk about lots of, of different things. I mean, the, the the way that football is played now is very different than it was back then as well. I mean, it's played on a slick playing surface. 
crisp yeah. passing. It's all about movement. And actually, when I was a kid, albeit a rubbish footballer, I used to hate it when the ball went up in the air because I didn't want to edit. it. Now, the ball is on the ground, particularly with City, all the time. Yeah. You, how do you compare those two? I mean, did you prefer well, the yeah, one the guts before? Or? It's the first thing. I, I, I like it the way it's played now. It's just so fast and sleek. It's like nothing you've, we've ever seen. Um and that was one of Pep's first things, you know, when he, when he commented what, uh, uh, about it, you know, about British football. He says the ball's always in the air. What's all that about? Um, so uh, he knew what he want, what he needed to do, and he, he's changed how how they play. And I think he's I think he's had a, a massive effect on uh, how the game is played in this country. Not just Pep, you know, there's Klopp, there's a few people, but he's spearheading it really. Uh, you know, they playing out from the back, and you know, just the game has changed completely from 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 the old days, and for the better. You know, and when you watch it, like you say, when you watch old clips of City uh, in the old days, and the pitch was a mud bath, wasn't it? You know, and you never, you know, it's it looks like Wimbledon every week. You see it at our, at our place, you know, so. It's coming on. The game's coming on. Um, you know the foot, the football side of things certainly for the better. I think. And obviously, City are doing a lot of winning at the moment. Um, and some of the snipers from outside will say it's getting boring. Well, where do you stand on that? <sighs> they, 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 I think they need to turn up and have a look for themselves. We see things they'll never see. Um, just. <laughs> You couldn't describe it as boring. If that's boring, uh, I don't know. I think they just like to have a pop at City. Um, no, it's never boring. Uh, the they're having a go now because obviously Liverpool are hot on our uh, tails, and you know, trying to chase us down. A big game coming up, obviously. Uh, and the, the red biased media have already kicked in your Carragher's and your Neville's and your Soonesses. Uh, all think, uh, you know, Liverpool have their momentum and they're going to do it. So the, the storm clouds are gathering around City at the moment. Wouldn't it be beautifully ironic if it was City that walks through the storm with our head held high and weren't <laughs> afraid of the dark? and walked on to win the league and the FA Cup and the Champions League. We can but dream, cheesy. It. It's going to be a... It's, I'm really excited for the running. I'm really excited for that game at the Etihad. Um, they are a brilliant team, Liverpool. That There's absolutely no denying it. They're, they've got strength in, in, in depth now. Um, and it's just going to be an absolutely amazing game. City and Liverpool will be challenging for everything again this year. And uh, it, it, it's going to be very exciting because it's so close. Really looking forward to it. Seems to have got very toxic between the fans. I know you probably a little bit away from that because I know you watch the home games in the Tunnel Club. But it's been started to get quite toxic between City and Liverpool fans, hasn't it? It gets very toxic in the tunnel club and all, you know, some because because lots of the away fans are, are are in there as well, um, but yeah, I, I I kind of don't go with all that. I, I don't listen. I mean, I mean, I, I made a program set in Manchester, and the character of Jim Royal, which was basically my dad, is a scouser. My mother-in-law is a scouser. Um, so, you know, this, this rivalry, I love the rivalry. It's fantastic. It, 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 it's what we go to the matches to see. Um, but I don't like it when it gets toxic. The, the, there's really no need for it for, from both sides for me. I, you know, that's the other thing that's changed about football. Going to games in the old days, you could get on the train with other opposition fans and it'd be fine. It is getting toxic. Let's hope it. Let's hope it returns. Let's hope that is one thing from the past that that can be, uh, you know, brought back again.
No, you're talking about the old days and comparing them to the new. Um, just just before I ask you a couple of questions about that, what, what's your feeling about this Liverpool game? The City, um, I got City going to win. I mean, obviously, a win or a draw as it stands at the moment, depending yeah. on other results, will be enough to keep City above them, won't it? Um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be tight, uh, tight as in terms of you know, it, it. It could genuinely go either way. Um, we can beat them on their day, on our day. They can beat us. Um, I think we'll do it because it's they. They've kind of we're on the back foot a bit. I know we're one point ahead, but we're on the back foot with Liverpool's momentum. And I think City always play well on the back foot when they think, "Hang on, you know, you think, oh, God, this could go horribly wrong." And it doesn't. I just hope, I, I'm not convinced about Foden being kind of that centre forward role, um, albeit, you know, he's all over the place. Uh, but I think we've got, the te- we've got the team to do it. it it's just going to be a superb game. What do you think? I think it's a hard one to call, and anybody yeah. that knows me knows I don't do predictions. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's certainly right that Liverpool have the momentum and belief, but I also have a great deal of faith in Pep Guardiola in terms of him getting them up for a big game. And yeah. you know, I know in the Champions League final they didn't quite get it right, and that's one we still talk about. But um, well, you'd like you, to think uh, you'll get uh, it right for this one. I know. I was. St- I. Uh... The Champions League, we went I went early, you know, I go with my wife and we went early. We said, we'll have a bit of a break of it. And we went early and we uh, checked in the uh, hotel and they said, um, I mean, this was about two or three days earlier than the than the uh, the game in Porto. Uh, and they said, um, hey, you, uh, what, you, what you're here for, you're just sightseeing and you want a break. I said, well, actually, we're coming for, we're here for the Champions League final. And they said, oh, I said, uh, between you and I, so the team are staying at this hotel. And I was like, really? And they went, yeah, 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 the team. Went, oh, bloody unbelievable. So we got, we couldn't wait and we waited in the bar and the team bus turned up and it was the Chelsea team bus. And we were like, oh, shit. Just a typical. And then, um, but all the time when we were out, you could hear, this, the city fans from you know when they, they they kind of took over the the river area down near the bridge didn't they and we could hear so certainly all the Chelsea team could hear because the hotel was just higher up on the valley uh, and we could hear all day the city fans singing all day and all night going on and I, I thought bloody hell I bet these are being wound up these Chelsea team and then yeah well, we know what happened. And then the following day, morning, we had to suffer the indignity of them displaying the trophy on the uh, balcony at breakfast. Put me right off me full English, it did cheesy. But uh, the, the players, the, the players were really kind of nice uh, with us. And we said, you know, you've ruined our holiday. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Uh, uh, but they were lovely, and so was uh, Thomas Tootle. So it's football, in it? You lose. He did, you know. He, the first game of the year that he that he played without any defensive midfielders and whatever. You know, it was just a bizarre thing. And he is prone to do things like that uh, for these big games. But I don't think he will this time. I think he knows what his best team are and I think he'll play them, that providing they're all fit. This is another one of those questions I ask a lot on the podcast. The City fans can be split on this. Which is more important, winning the league this year or winning the Champions League? If you had to choose. It'd be nice to have both. Of um, course. <laughs> the, um, I'd always, I, I, always I, I think the league is harder to win. So I... Um, out of the two, I would say I, I would still want the league. But as we haven't won the Champions League, it'd be nice to win that. If we if we won either or, I'd be delighted. If we won both, I'd be over the blue moon. If we won none of them, 
Oh, blimey. I don't know what I'd do. <laughs> Jump out the window. We talk a lot as City fans about how the club has changed both on and off the field. Is everything yeah. for the better? Do you, do you think that, um, is there anything that you would find fault with? Because there's not much wrong, is there? Um, yeah, it's, it's difficult to find fault in what, in in how how they run the club. Sometimes, I mean, for me, in the hospitality bits, um, it, it's fantastic. I mean, I pay a heck of a lot of money for it, so I expect it to be fantastic. I'm not no, I'm not no Gallagher turning up getting a bloody freebie. Um, <laughs> hello, no, if you're watching. Um, but um, they do a lot right. Sometimes they. I mean, they do this thing now on um, Champions League nights and they say, you know, uh, we've got the light show on, which is spectacular. I heard you talking about it on your show uh, last week. Um, it is spectacular. I mean, once you've seen it, fine. Um, but brilliant for kids going, uh, superb. But they have this, in the hospitality, they say, you know, uh, we're doing this thing great and the bar's open now till midnight and we're uh, putting music on and this and that. And, the, and, the mu and we couldn't wait to get out the music on it. And it, it's, it's a kind of rave music kind of stuff, which, are, you know, kids love, fine. But there ain't that many kids in there. So I don't think they've kind of read the room properly. Uh, the average age is about 92 in there, not slightly less. Uh, so, and I said, you know, what, 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 we couldn't hear ourselves talk, and you want to discuss the match that you've just seen and whatever, and have a drink and stuff. Couldn't hear yourself talk. So, we ended up going instead of staying an hour later, we went an hour earlier. So, sometimes I think they, they, they don't quite uh, read the room. Uh, most of the things to get right. It annoys me. I'll tell you what does annoy me, and you won't like me talking about you on your own programme, but I'm going to do anyway, and you can choose to edit it out or not. I hope you don't. But I've seen you trying to get in for interview. Who was it last week or the week before you want, who wanted to, you to interview him and you couldn't even get in? What, who was it? Ali Banabia. And there was, a, there was an incident a couple of weeks before that where a, a guy said to me, I'm taking my 80-year-old father into the uh, tunnel club. Can you come and meet him? He'd love to meet you. And I said, I I'm not allowed in the tunnel club. I mean, unless somebody who is, you know, is supporting me, sort of invites me in. I'm not, I don't have access anywhere. Well, it I, might I, look I, that way, but I don't. I absolutely find that remarkable that, you know, Benami is asking you to, what wants an interview with you because he knows your heritage of city. Uh, and they're not, they're not letting you in. I think is, I think is absolutely disgusting. I think that you should have for, 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 for what you've done for City over the years in terms of PR, you should be treated like a king. I, I, I mean, I know that commerce dictates how football clubs are run these days, but the heart and soul of people like yourself, uh, you know, schlepping up and down to the country and all over Europe and. Uh, you know, keeping us informed and entertained and a big part of the City family. And, you, you know, they should, they, should give you a, they should give you a box and parade anybody through you that you want or a, a, certainly a pass to go everywhere. But, you know, in, in, I, I, just, I just think it's a PR disaster for them to, to exclude you from things. And, you know, I... I if it makes it easier for you, uh, I'm not, because uh, uh, I am having a go at them on your show, but uh, I would I would have lots of the podcasters who, who do it. I would, in theatre, when we, 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 we put on Early Doors Live, a, a theatre show last, last year through uh, venues, arenas, and all sorts of things, and wherever we went, wherever we played, there's always a role, uh, that are free for people of influence or who 
then it is good PR and it helps, you know, they hopefully go back and talk if they like the show and then more and more people come, which you in effect do. So if we can afford putting on a show to eight, 10,000 people, City can afford it. And we know we all know how much money City have got. So they can afford to do that. I, you know, I, I listen to all the podcasts uh, and, and, I, and they all bring something different, but I'd have you there. I'd have, uh, what's his name? David Mooney from the Blue Moon podcast. Noisy Neighbours, I enjoy. Joey and Mull, they're funny, irreverent, <laughs> good laugh. They should be there. Hey, Sam, on the 9320. I'm trying to make you feel better now that I'm not just having a go at you. <laughs> you uh, 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 Howard Hawking, brilliant. He contributes on lots of stuff. I've read, read his books, brilliant. All these people, yourself included, you've brought us entertainment and information and art. Uh, part of the City family, when, when I've been away and I listen to podcasts and I can't get to the games for one reason or another, uh, you know, just keep keep the City brand going and, and you you, uh, you deserve to be treated as such. I mean, and, and, and but you especially, but you've been doing it for, how long is it you've been reporting on City now? Well, I mean, I started on the, uh, I did the original commentary on video for them, which would have been in the 80s. And since then, either through Club Call, through the BBC for 25 years, through podcasting and vlogging, hosting the Junior Blues, doing forums for them, um, you know, yeah. being the stadium announcer. I mean, I've, I've been in some way connected until the last 12 months or so, and now I have no connection to the club. Um, well, I've, I've been short, doing something. That's nothing short of scandalous, really. It it, it genuinely is, you know. I think. Well, the, the other side. I've got to say the other side of this. I don't listen to be a loving. I mean, they will probably see me now as sort of yesterday, as you know, a legacy fan, an older fan, and everything's now aimed towards younger fans. Um, you know, and they want lots of diversity, and I'm not diverse, am I? Um, I would imagine that's the reason now. They're looking for a global audience uh, rather than, you know, the Mancunian audience. Yeah, so but who, know, who, who, know, who knows more about City than you? Isn't the past part of the future? I don't claim to know more than... No, than I, I, I'm not, you know, but... You, you've been around. You, 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 you've, you, you're up there with Helen the Bell <laughs> and Pete the Badge. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I knew Helen oh, used to go on the coach occasionally with her. <laughs> oh, blimey. But, uh, yeah, I think, I think they should cherish people like you. And, and, and the, as I said, you know, the, 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 the new faces coming along, uh, uh, I think they're making uh, a, bit, a big mistake if they don't. Well, thank you very much for, for your support. I hope they're listening. I think I'm yesterday's man. Um, no, I don't think you are. Don't say that, pal. We need yeah. you. The rest of this podcast, I'm hoping to be talking to um, at least one lad from City Matters about all things off the field. So um, that, that's something that will come up in, in a few moments. But right. j just to finish off, Craig, I mean... You know, in, in t forgetting everything we've just been talking about there, it could not be a better time to be a City fan, could it? No, it's uh, win, lose or draw, it's great to be a blue. <laughs> you can put that clip at the end of the show. 